We are on YouTube now. Can you just confirm with uh, any of the students if there is any uh, hiccup or Dr. Mukul, if you can just check on the YouTube and let us know. Dr. Mukul? Yes, yes. Dr. Dibank, let me open the website. Huh? I'll just confirm. Can yeah. you... Yes, YouTube link is live, but there's no video. Go to the bunker. So you have to check on the videos. Yes, I can. I can see it now. Okay. Yes, I can see Sanjay sir now. Gaurav, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Uh, voice is clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Mukul, are the students able to uh, see it live on the YouTube link? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I'm able to see it live. So uh, anybody who opens the channel should be able to see it.
sir have you posted the link to the youtube channel on the groups yeah i have i have then they okay. should be able to see sir, right now there is no video on the live uh, stream stream sir so right now the student are not able to see through youtube uh, no sir uh, the channel is very visible but there is no video stream right now ah correct okay. okay this is probably because we have not started the sh uh, screen sharing all right okay fine so i think i think we'll start uh with this the people will keep joining in as i can see the people are already joining in yes so we can start sanjay sir yeah yeah can we start yeah we can start yeah okay fine i'll start good evening one and all present here respected chairman dmet padamshri dr lk gandhi sir secretary dmet dr vikram gandhi vice principals dr puneet batra and dr narendra kumar pg in charge dr shalu rai respective hods of all the esteemed departments faculty residents and dear students it is an honor to be in this meeting in presence of our guest speaker dr sanjay singh who is presently the dean professor and head of the department of oral and maxillofacial surgery at faculty of dentistry jamia millia islamia new delhi who has taken out time for us to speak on an important trending topic with extensive practical implications in our daily practice not only at the institutional tier but also at an individual level covid 19 has impacted the world enormously with reverberations it has changed the scenario of our daily dental practice and overall lifestyle there have been plethora of reading and visual material all over the web and periodical articles that suggest enforcing certain regulations however discontention confusion with relation to the regulations have hampered practitioners in establishing their practices back up to speed sanjay sir will be speaking on the topic practice of dentistry in the post covid era i recommend you all to kindly listen intently and carefully to make the best out of this opportunity with this i would like to invite dr sanjay sir to kindly take over thank you dr gaurav mitra i'll just share the screen am i audible dr gaurav yes sir you are very much audible okay i'm just sharing the screen good evening to one and all at the outset i would like to thank the management of uh, idsc dental college the principal professor dr gaurav mithal professor dr puneet batra actually dr puneet batra uh, uh, spoke to me and uh, he said uh, you speak on this topic i would like to thank all of you for giving me this opportunity to interact with the staff and student of idsc learned faculty members and dear students the corona virus pandemic has changed the entire world let alone dentistry but yes we are the worst hit obviously because this virus harbors in oral cavity nasal cavity oropharyngeal area nasopharyngeal area we have made alteration modification innovation to cope up with corona virus pandemic to be able to serve the uh, patients and before i switch over to the main topic let us quickly recapitulate the sequence of events on june 30th 2020 the world health organization declared covid-19 as public health emergency about a year back on march 11th 2020 who announced corona virus outbreak was a pandemic by the end of september 2020 almost all the countries of the world had it and till now we have about 18.5 crore 
corona positive patients and we have had around around uh, sorry it is 8 point for to this there is a high risk of cross infection amongst dentists auxiliaries as well as patients and your am i audible there yes sir but there's it was showing something you know the disconnection of uh, net some some issue with that is it fine yeah. now yeah it is better now your voice was cracking earlier actually yeah there it showed something you know there is uh, net issue something uh, like that so it 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 makes all the more worse because we have patients which are asymptomatic and they may be carriers so they recommended due precautions are needed while we are treating patients this is the transmission uh, this slide shows the transmission dynamics in dental uh, practice where you can have a uh, direct exposure to respiratory secretion having containing droplets saliva or other patient materials in direct contact with contaminated surfaces or instrument or inhalation of suspended airborne viruses if you have done a uh, aerosol generating procedure in the clinic or mucosal contact with infection containing droplets center for disease control says currently there is no available data for risk assessment of sars cov2 transmission during dental practice they say aerosol generating procedures to be avoided as far as possible and if we are doing aerosol generating procedures high evacuation suction should be there we should be using rubber dam as to minimize spatter and aerosol occupational safety and health administration commonly known as osha issued guidelines on preparing workplace for covid-19 it suggests that best way to control a workplace hazard is to systematically remove it from the workplace rather than depending on workers to reduce their exposure these are the considerations for patient management they say minimize exposure risk and how do you do that manage patient's condition with as little intervention as possible agp should be and if you have to do it only in in those condition where it becomes absolutely necessary and whenever you are doing aerosol generating procedures make sure that the doors of the clinic are shut so that it doesn't spread to the other areas waiting areas and other areas you should be using high speed suction and a rubber dam the fifth point is complete dental treatment in one visit wherever it is possible you cannot complete a long duration procedure but short duration procedure can be completed in one visit now we have uh, we there are a lot of recommendations which uh, bring about changes in reception area operatory change rooms so first we'll talk about uh, dental clinic modification and we are coming to the reception area so we have to have visuals to educate patients and we should have visuals at the entrance and strategic areas we should be telling about respiratory dietary hygiene social distancing cuff etiquette and disposal of contaminated items in trash can we should have plastic barrier or glass barrier at the reception desk preferably with a two way speaker system we should also have foot operated dustbin and foot operated hand sanitizer dispensing unit there should be availability of adequate availability of ppe such as head cap face shield eye cover n95 mask examination gloves hand sanitizers paper tissues and so on waiting chairs should be placed a meter apart normally in reception area we have lot of you know lot of things there so we should avoid any kind of fomites in the form of 
TV remotes, flower, flower pots, or similar articles. We should encourage cashless or contactless uh, payment, and we should have foot-operated bin with a lid, so that patient can discard used paper or tissue. We can have this kind of visuals, which says good hand hygiene. You should be able to. You should be washing your hands for 20 seconds with soap water, or used alcohol-based sanitizer. Avoid handshakes. Rather wave or say namaste. Do not touch your eyes, mouth, or nose without sanitizing your hands. Respiratory hygiene: cover nose, mouth while sneezing, coughing with a tissue. Use a medical mask. Social distancing: restrict your movement out of the house. Go out only if it is necessary. Avoid public contact. And if you have some symptoms, must consult. the physician now from reception area we are coming to the operatory area this is an important area and high vacuum extraoral suctions are recommended and this will reduce minimize the aerosol droplets in the clinic unidirectional air flow during uh, summer time we all uh, were having fans behind uh, the operator and uh, it was going the air was blown towards the patient we can, alternatively we can have a very strong exhaust fan so that the flow of the air becomes unidirectional the window air conditioning system is protected frequent cleaning of filters or we can have indoor portable air cleaning system equipped with hepa filter uv light we should have dedicated change rooms where we we are doing donning and doffing of personal protective equipment now these are the protocols for dental patient management tally screening and triaging is very important because we can ascertain which patient requires urgent care emergency care or elective care and depending upon our preparedness we can appoint patient accordingly as of now the recommendations are only for emergency care and urgent care elective cases they say should be deferred till further notice maybe in a month or two when we all get vaccinated these guidelines will change so as soon as the patient comes to the uh, dental institution or dental clinic they are screened they are given a covid questionnaire and based on that we classify these patients into high risk or low risk patient obviously high risk somebody having symptoms or somebody who's traveled uh, abroad or somebody whose family members has had uh, covid uh, symptoms or uh, suffered from uh, covid low risk where there are no such history both these group of patients can further be divided into patients requiring elective care emergency care or urgent care in elective care routine dental visits treatment oral for uh, such as oral prophylaxis restoration denture correction emergency care means life saving intervention where you have any kind of space infection cellulitis bleeding trauma airway obstruction urgent care excruciating pain resulting from pulpitis dry socket abscess so in case of urgent care the first line of treatment is pharmacological management where you prescribe medicine if medicines do not work then such patients are treated as emergency patients and whenever you are treating these patients they should be treated with all covid 19 protocol most of the places are asking for rt pcr of these patients and then they take up proper ppes are to be uh, used and the clinical setup has to be uh, in a manner that it it reduces aerosol uh, uh, generation by having uh, high vacuum suction 
or we can can have unidirectional flow or we can have negative pressure rooms these are the commonly used analgesic and antibiotic acetaminophen or paracetamol this is the main stay 1000 mg if you have to use it as analgesic every 6 8 6 to 8 hourly ketrolac may be used 10 mg every 6 hourly ibuprofen is little uh, controversial but uh, there is nothing against it as of now antibiotic the main stay is amoxicillin if the severity of infection you feel is more you can use amoxicillin and clavulanic acid if you are suspecting anaerobic infection you can add metronidazole clindamycin is a very good substitute and it works well now guidelines for dental health care professionals strict ad strict adherence to hand hygiene protocol and what are the pps required for different kind of uh, 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 purposes somebody who is at the help desk registration counter is supposed to be at a mild risk you supposed to have a screen or a, a plastic screen or a glass screen separating or segregating patient from him and it is considered as mild so you can uh, for these people pp recommended is triple layer mask and latest examination glass dentists only exam uh, if uh, are only examining the patient it is also considered mild risk and uh, the pp recommended is three layered mask protective eye eyewear face shields and gloves uh, when you are doing some procedure and if it is non aerosol generating procedure you are at a moderate risk there you need n95 mask protective eyewear face shield gloves and surgical gown that's it but if you are doing aerosol generating procedure you are at a high and a very high risk so what we add to it is cover all and this cover all is called as pp synonymously these days used as ppes people say ppe so they are talking about cover all so this is required only in case of aerosol generating procedures we have to do a lot of procedural uh, modifications we have to drape the patient preferably using disposable plastic apron and we have to ask the patient to rinse either with 2% povidone iodine on one or 1% hydrogen peroxide before the procedure now this these are departmental uh, department wise modification actually we have moved uh, much ahead of these uh, recommendations and all of us are doing elective procedures although we have reduced the number of procedures but we all are doing it more or less with all the precautions it will depend upon the preparedness of the operatory clinic or the institution how well they are equipped to handle the patient and how many patients they can uh, do in a day or two but the recommendation says in periodontics the procedures which are allowed are management of gingival periodontal or perio periforeal abscess management of food impaction coronaplasty or plunger cut cauterization of periodontal pocket pericoronal flap pulp polyp etc normally procedures which are not allowed are ultrasonic scaling use of micromotor or air rotor scaling and root planning if one has to do they have to use hand scalers what practice modification they suggest pre procedural mouth rinse this this is again 0.2% povidone iodine on 1% hydrogen peroxide this has to be used in all the procedures in whatever department you are doing procedures use of high vacuum suction tips use of hand instrument for scaling prosthodontics these are the procedures allowed minor adjustment occlusal equilibration in existing complete of partial denture removal of crown fractured segment of prosthesis recementation of dislodged crown or bridge removable complete of partial denture insertion what is not allowed biomechanical tooth preparation for receiving crown and bridge we all are doing it with precaution i know placement or removal of dental implants 
impression making for removable fixed prosthesis practice modification same poidon iodine or hydrogen peroxide range use of high suction tips use of disposable aerotur this is this is not uh, done in our, our country this is in the western in our world but uh, we do have uh, disposable aerotur dental impression and cast this dis dis disinfection using appropriate disinfectant uh, disinfectant uh, and the highest level of disinfection achieved is by glutaraldehyde 2% glutaraldehyde and if you have to do uh, these procedures they should be scheduled in such a way that uh, it is done in the end of the day when there are no more patients oral pathology they say only hemograms for emergency dental extractions only not allowed hemogram for elective surgical procedure but then elective procedures are being done so i will not uh, say much about it oral medicine radi radiology medicinal treatment of oral potentially malignant disorders procedures not allowed intraoral periapical radiograph we are also not doing the iopa we are restricting restricting ourselves to opgs only extraoral radiographs and cone beam computed tomography except in case of emergency if emergency cases are there you may do this perform opd procedures only the radiology section to cater only extraoral radiography if intraoral radiography has to be done then double tech, uh, barrier technique has to be used conservative dentistry and endodontics these are the procedures caries hand excavation and dressing gic restoration and cervical abrasion emergency root canal opening if swelling abscess pain persists recementation of inlay procedures not allowed aerotur aerosol use of any procedure except emergency in case of emergency you can do all this same practice uh, modifications range with 2.2% povidon iodine or 1% hydrogen peroxide use of rubber dam use of five vacuum suction tip use of hand instrument for caries excavation use of disposable aerotur orthodontics procedures allowed hanging or dislodged molar tube or dislodgement of appliance or component wire picking or any component of fixed appliance injuring soft tissue transpalatal arch temporary anchorage devices procedures not allowed use of micromotor aerotur removal of any residual composite from the bonded enamel practice modification same micro etching or sand blasting technique can be used to modify enamel for bonding without etching self etching primers eliminate rinsing and drying step so they they may be used periodontics severe dental pain pulpitis in mixed dentition management of acute dentofacial trauma management of cleft lip and palate management of cellulitis facial swelling again aerotur aerosol use not allowed so root canal opening except in emergency cases practice practice modification rubber dam use hand instrument high vacuum suction tip use of disposable aerotur procedures allowed in maxillofacial surgery control of bleeding that may involve suturing of wound incision and drainage of space infection emergency extraction of tooth tmj dislocation there you have to do conservative management normally definitive management of uh, soft and hard tissue trauma is not recommended but uh, in case of emergency we all are we all take up cases in ot practice modification same range with hydrogen peroxide and povidon uh, iodine use of five vacuum suction tip emergency treatment protocol for management of high risk patient when we say high risk patient either they are they are uh, 
that their RT PCR is positive, or they have sim symptoms similar to that. If such a patient is uh, put up uh, for a procedure, either he has to be the only patient, or he has to be at the end of uh, he or she has to be at the end of the day. And uh, the operatory should be so designed so that it reduces the aerosol, uh, it eliminates or reduces the aerosol generation. And uh, there are adequate airborne precautions taken, preferably in a negative pressure uh, uh, chamber. Emergency dental care for non-COVID patients may be provided using appropriate engineering controls, work practice and infection control protocols. Management of resolved COVID-19 patients if uh, two RT-PCRs are negative, we consider such a patient uh, negative and uh, such patients can be treated as any other patient. Patient discharge protocol. This includes removal of patient's drape by the assistant. Patient to perform hand hygiene. You should only record prescription and follow-up instruction after doffing PPEs. This is how you're supposed to do hand hygiene. Uh, you can apply a palm full of product. Then you can rub your hands palm to palm. Similarly, right palm over left dorsum. And palm to palm. So these are, this is just to depict how hand hygiene has to be done. Disinfection of the clinical areas. 1% sodium hypochlorite solution with a contact time of 10 minutes. You should be mopping your floor. Step. I can I can hear a lot of uh, sorry sir. Just a second. The panther, can you please mute everyone? <laughs> Everybody is muted, sir. Hello, Dr. Gaurav, am I audible? Yeah, now you're audible, right? Yes, sir. I'm about to say that you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, disinfection of clinical settings. First is floor. Floors are to be mocked with 1% sodium hypochlorite solution with a contact time of 10 minutes. Ideally, the floor should be cleaned after every patient or after a major splash or too early. This protocol can be decided in this institution or from clinic to clinic. Wash and disinfect the mop with clean water and 1% sodium hypochlorite. And rest of the surface can also be prepared by using 1% sodium hypochlorite solution. Delicate electronic equipment you can use alcohol-based rub or a spirit before each patient's contact. Fogging and non-touch surface disinfection, we are using 20% weight by volume working solution of hydrogen peroxide. The amount of solution required is approximately one liter per 1,000 cubic feet. That means 10 by 10 by 10 chamber. Immediately after the procedure, exit the room and close the operatory for half an hour. This allows the aerosol droplets to settle down. The room can then be opened and fan switched on for aeration. Wet surfaces can be dried clean using a style cloth or clean cloth. Waste management. Prior to any inappropriate accumula accumulation, dental offices should be routinely 
then the the waste in the dental offices should be routinely transported to institutional temporary storage facility dental waste resulting from the treatment of suspected or confirmed covid-19 patient is considered medically infectious and it should be strictly disposed in accordance with the official instructions using double layer yellow medical waste package with goose neck ligation like this coming to the conclusion dental health healthcare personnel's need to understand the implication of transmission of sars cov2 virus and they need to keep themselves updated with any new information regarding this disease the recent state of affairs obligate the need to strike a balance between the safety of the healthcare professional and yet providing optimal dental care to the patient thank you that was uh, indeed a very crisp and informative presentation uh, i would like if anybody has any questions or doubts or wants to discuss anything if anybody wants to ask anything can unmute himself or herself and thank you gorav thank, thank you very much i sir i would like to thank you to take out time for to for us to speak on this important trending topic i should say thank you so much sir for taking out the time you welcome gorav i would also like to thank uh, dr lk gandhi sir and dr vikram gandhi sir without whose encouragement this webinar wouldn't have been possible a special mention of thanks to dr puneet batra for arranging this informative webinar with dr sanjay singh thanks to all the hods and faculty members who are my strength a th big thanks to all the students thank you so much thank you sir thank you once again the banker can you please uh, display the thank you so much sir <laughs> this is very nice. shortly thank you all thank you so much thank you puneet thank you dr gaurav thank you sir thank you so sir i shall end the meeting now yes yeah the all right thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you